What's going on, man? We're back again with another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Golden State Warriors. I wanted to do this yesterday, but I, I, I was tired, bro. I was tired. I tried to record three videos at one at once, like last night. It, it went bad. <laughs> it went bad. But now, talking about the Golden State Warriors, they just had a preseason game last yesterday, and I'm not going to overreact, but shit, they look really good. Like, even though Steph shot terrible, Draymond was just chilling. He had his little eight, eight rebounds, like four assists, five points. He was chilling. The one thing that caught me off guard yesterday was how fucking good their young talent is. Like, their young talent is really good. They drafted Ryan Rollins and Patrick Bowen Jr. this year, and I forgot about that. Ryan Rollins, Ryan Rollins I'm just going to say this now. If he plays, because I don't know, maybe they're going to um, put him in the G League like they did Moses Moody and Dante Kaminga. But if he plays this year, he's going to make it easier for them to get rid of Jordan Poole. He is that nice, and he fits that perfectly with the team. If you didn't see him yesterday, watch how he played that point guard position for them yesterday. He is really good. And then Patrick Baldwin, Baldwin Jr. reminds me a lot of Michael Porter Jr., uh, just snipers, consistent snipers. And it's like, their shot is like, you can't contest it at all. You can contest, actually. You're not blocking it. <laughs> like, you're not going to get a block on that. And then the same thing on the defensive side, they both suck. But other than that, they remind me a lot of each other. But then what we seen from James Wiseman yesterday, and this is my theory. I'm not really a guy that has conspiracy theories of that. But that nigga was not hurt last year, bro. <laughs> he was not hurt. They were putting, they put him in the chamber. chamber. I don't watch anybody, but like that one Goku or whoever that was in that chamber, they were building his ass up for this season because they knew they could have won without him. And if he plays like he played yesterday, they might go back to back. They might. And I, I mean, that's not an overreaction, man. He just looked really good, really fluent. He had a lot of pick and roll dunks. He had a couple mid range shots. He looked really strong in the post against the Taj Gibson, who was really smart, strong against uh, Daniel Gaffer, who was pretty strong himself. Like, he looked really good yesterday. The footwork has always been there. It looked good yesterday. I, I, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. His shot blocking was decent yesterday. I'm really scared, bro. I'm really scared. And then just looking at the team as a whole, they didn't lose nothing. Like, you say, people can say they lost Gary Payton Jr., who was probably their best perimeter defender. You can argue between him and Wiggs. But when you're backing that up and you can, can, can keep, god damn, you can get Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga to back that up, who are also really good defenders in themselves. And then they're more, way more on offense. Like, they didn't lose nothing with that loss. I don't pour it. That's the one loss that kind of hurts. I said that's the worst loss. And the Gary Payne Jr. lost because he was just such a steady shooter. But then again, you have that in Moses Moody. Like, they didn't lose nothing. The shit, they lost that game right back with them two young guys. And they still have more young guys they can throw in that they need. Like, they're just so deep. And yesterday, showed me that pause. They're they, they so deep and crazy. Um, I already told y'all how I feel about Steph. I think Steph is going to have an MVP year. When we're looking at his year last year, he averaged 26 points. Shot 44% from the three, 38% from the field. Those are really good numbers, just not for Steph. And that's kind of crazy, but, like, it's not for Steph. Steph's way more consistent than that. But those are still good numbers. And I think motivation coming from that championship, him still getting discredited from that championship, I think. And he, we know he sees he sees everything. He's on Twitter. He, he's on Instagram. He just made an Instagram post yesterday because they said the Warriors were going to win 41 games last year when they won 50. And they got better. Like, he has been so stupid. But he's seen that, and then he commented under that. He said, they also said we, we had a 14% chance of winning the championship. So he's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. So I think this all that stuff he's going to use as motivation. It's just, it's just my hot take. I think him and LeBron are going to have a really good MVP race. That's, what, that's at least what I'm praying for. Because I feel like they, they've never had that, even though they've been rivals for so long. They never had a great just MVP race where they both had the, the top of their games. Their teams are both really good, and they're just fighting for that MVP. That would be so good and fun for the league. Um, then when we're looking at the surrounding pieces, Wiggs, I hope he does the same thing he did last year. Even though he made an all-star last year, he kind of chilled out through the regular season, kind of learned from Jimmy Butler. He chilled out through the regular season. But in that playoffs, that's when he just took his game to the next level. He became 
an elite, elite defender. He was really good on defense last year, but like he was one of the best defenders in the league in that playoffs. You've seen it in the, the Dallas Mavericks series. You've seen it in the Boston Celtics series. So if he is able to take that next step again, I think that like shit like like the reason why you see my face like that because they they don't they don't have no flaws. The continuity is crazy. They won four championships together. Like, I, I still think Draymond is still really good. I still think he's an all-star level type player, defensive of the year, defensive player of the year type player. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins that this year. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt because he should have three. He should have three. If you don't know the one I'm talking about, that's second year. I don't know how Kawhi won it over Draymond. I still remember that. I don't know how he did that. But he should have three defensive player of the years. He lost last year. Um, because he got hurt. He was running away with that award. But I think he can do that again this year. Um, Kevin Looney, Mr. Consistent. Um, don't need him to play 82 games this year because you have uh, James Wiseman now, so he can kind of chill out probably the rest of some games. But he also fits really perfect with this team to where I wouldn't be surprised if he's still starting because he just he knows how to play off Steph and Draymond so well. He knows how to get Clay open. He knows how to get Wiggs open. Like, even though Wiggins, I mean, uh, Wiseman look good, he doesn't know the shit that Kevin Allen Looney does, knows to make this team better. Like, the screens, at times, he knows when to make, uh, do the screens. He knows when to pass the ball. He knows when to roll. He knows when to pop. Like, he just, he's so smart. And he understands the system so well. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he's still starting, and I wouldn't be mad if he's still starting. And then on the defensive side, he's always been an underrated defender to me. Ever since that 2018 series against the Houston Rockets where they tried to attack him, and he just wasn't going. He's always been a really good perimeter defender to me, and he always still tried to attack them, and he's still a really good defender on the perimeter. Um, then when you look at the bench, I still didn't even talk about Jordan Poole. Even though I said Bones is my pick to win the sixth man of the year, I think this is Jordan Poole's year to win that shit. Bones is just my pick. That's what I would go with. That's what I would root for. But I think this is Jordan Poole's year to win that. Um, and like I said, they got Jermichael Green. That's a really good addition. He kind of fits them perfectly. He can shoot, can pick and pop. And I think he's going to fit perfectly, especially in that pick and roll with Jordan Poole for it. He's also a good passer in the pick and roll. I think they just have a good team. And then Clay. Let Clay last for a reason because... I think, like, we're kind of disrespecting Clay. Last year, he came back off an injury, averaged 18. I don't know the shooting percentages. I'm not even going to lie. Make them up. But he averaged 18 points as the fourth option at times. As the fourth, fourth option. And the only reason why people kind of call him Walsh, the only reason why he looked bad at times, because he was just shooting dumb shots. And I think that was just him being so eager to be out there. He was so happy to be out there. That he was just going to get his shit off. And I'm not mad at it because they still won the championship. But when we seen in the finals when he needed to lock in, he locked in. As the third option, he locked in, still averaging 17. And he was elite on defense. He locked down Jalen Brown for a lot of those games. So, and I, I, I disrespect him too. Because I forgot, I didn't even put him on my shooting guard list. I watched that the other day. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? He's still top six, top seven. So... I'm thinking, and this is not one of my hot takes I was going to put in my um, my bull take videos. I think he can go back to being an all-star player. I don't think he was far from it last year. He can go back to be an all-star player. I, I definitely see it happening, um, especially with this team. I think this team is also going to be really good. This is that one team that I see battling with the Nuggets as far as the number one seed. I still think the Nuggets are going to have it pretty comfortably, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors do get it. But... Clay is going to be really good this year. Like I said, Steph's going to be an MVP candidate. Same thing with Draymond. He's going to be a defensive player of the year candidate. And if they play those young guys, I don't think they really lost out on anything when losing Gary Payton Jr. and Otto Porter because you backed that up with Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. Like, you didn't lose shit. <laughs> you didn't lose nothing. Now, I love what they're doing with Jonathan Kaminga, by the way. In the summer league and yesterday, they had him playing point, and he looked really good. One thing he has to tighten up is just, and it's going to sound crazy, <laughs> His bag, because it's so predictable. Like, he got ripped twice by Taj Gibson because it's a simple double cross or a simple long cross, and it's so easy to reach, um, especially because it's so slow. <laughs> he thinks he's going somewhere, but it's just so slow. But I love how they played him in the point. He was actually doing really good, like, just guiding the other players. He got a lot of, he got James Wiseman a lot of touches in the post, um, putting people where they belong. That He ran the lineup to close the game, 
and he ended up winning that game. So I, I love what they're doing with him as far as letting him control the rock a lot. He won't really do that with the real Warriors, like when they're in the season, because you have Jordan pull off that bench. But I do see times where he can go out there and kind of play a dream on role with Jordan Poole. And if they do that, that's going to open up Jordan Poole a lot more because I feel like he's more dangerous off the ball. So it, it, it's just a lot of ways this team can beat you. But we're looking at this ceiling. Like I said, their ceiling is another championship. Their floor is Western Conference Finals. I still don't think. Like, we haven't seen the team beat this Warriors team healthy. We haven't. They lost Clay in 20, um, 2019. Also lost KD. The year they lo uh, lost to the Cavs, Draymond got suspended. Y'all already know that stuff. And then two years ago, when it was just Steph and Draymond, like, you still didn't have Clay. A healthy Warriors team, once they were, like, the real Warriors, they haven't been beat yet. So, I think it's only one man that can beat them as number 34. But I wouldn't be surprised if this team wins the championship again. They're just so fucking good. They have the best coach in the league as of right now. I love Pop, but it's Steve. The defensive, the defensive scheme he has for them is just... And I think the offense is just so free-flowing. It's so so Spurs-like, so we can kind of give some of that to Pop. But on defense, it's, just, it's so good. It's so good. And I don't, I don't think Draymond carries. I think the scheme and the way Kerr uses his defenders is and his rotation, it, it's so good, bro. So we got to give him his respect. But other than that, man, last video today, man, I, I got to lay back. I got to lay down, man. My back hurts. Peace out.